Hi guys, Andy the Budget Angler here. A uh, bit of an emergency video, uh, call to action, big call to action today. I need you to sign my petition to save the Norfolk Bream effectively. Um, uh, the Environment Agency have granted a permit to Natural England to put fish barriers up at Hofton Great Broad on the Norfolk Broads to prevent Bream from entering the Broad. Um, the long and short of it is that they believe that the Bream are stirring up the water, making it murky and is, it's bad for biodiversity and they are basically throwing the bream under a bus. Now, um, that Hofton Great Broad is a massive spawning site for bream. It's probably the main spawning site for bream on the Norfolk Broads. We've got loads of science to back that up. We've done surveys. Um, Broads Angling Service Group have commissioned, um, uh, well, with, with, with the help from a university student, have, have done some great, you know, great research. The wasps are trying to attack me. Um, showing that the bream are migrating from Hickling Broad, you know, 124 kilometre round trip um, to uh, Hofton Great Broad, um, you know, wiggling all around the rivers. And, and we're talking millions of bream. We are talking millions of bream, huge shoals of bream that take hours and hours to pass through. And they're going to be prevented from entering the bream, uh, the broad to spawn. And I think it's absolutely disgusting. Um, so please sign my petition with the link below. Um, if you want details about it, I'm not going to go into all the science of it, but needless to say, it is bad for fishing. It's bad for what well, bad for wildlife, bad for the ecosystem. Taking out a whole spawning colony of bream is just going to, you know, it will collapse. The ecosystem will collapse. Um, it's going to kill the angling. Angling brings in so much to the economy. I mean, there are so many reasons that this shouldn't happen. That it's unbelievable that it's happening. And I have suspicions that there's something more to this. It's a private broad owned by a by a wealthy family, and I suspect they might just want a private. Uh, private swimming broad with clear water and you know who cares about the wildlife that's going to thrive on it and so there, there's definitely more to this than meets the eye um, I'm going to put some links below to all the information if you want to know more then get in touch with me I'm on all the social medias just look up the budget angler uh, um, and yeah we, we really need to put a stop to this I'm going to play some clips now put together by Kelvin the chairman of the Broad Angling Service Group he explains it all far more eloquently than me so if you want to know the bit, bit more of the nuts and bolts then hang around and watch that and if not just click that link below and sign that petition for me. We've got 2,600 odd as I'm recording this and really to get a response from government we need 10,000 and to get it debated in parliament we need 100,000. So we've got loads of work to do and we've got about five months left to do it. So any support you can give guys, I'll be absolutely you know, indebted to you. So please, please uh, check that link out and support our cause. Cheers guys, fish on. Welcome to a video about fish tracking in the Northern Broads. This is a study of um, a PhD led by Emily Winter, a Bournemouth University student, um, looking at putting transponders and receivers across the Northern Broads and tracking bream as they made their way to spawn in Hofton Great Broad. This particular fish travelled some 183 kilometres over a period of 88 days, moving to its spawning destination in Hofton Broad to the far left of the screen. Um, as you can see, there's a daily track um, and how it moves around a maximum of 18 kilometres on any particular day. And how it always ended up in Hofton, Great Broad, and then into Hudson's Bay, which is a famous spawning area for bream. Now, this particular broad is going to be isolated under a proposal from Natural England to enhance weed growth. Um, a permit has been granted by the Environment Agency and we've got a petition against the closure of this broad to bream. And it's the destruction of bream stocks for all to enjoy, both people and nature. Thank you very much. Hi, this is a video clip about the wonderful Norfolk Broads, its bream and its ecosystem and their key relationship with wildlife and sustainability. To put some context in fish volumes, in the River Bure alone, that's 3 million fish over 40 kilometres. What does this mean? What does it support? And it's all part of a wider ecosystem. These fish, out of view and out of the public's mind, we can now see and view using the latest technologies as they move around the broads in their annual migration cycle. So why do we treat San Martins on Bacton Cliffs, seals on Horsey Beach, so different to Broad's Bream? Is it a case of out of sight, out of mind? So these birds all support part of the wider Broad's ecosystem, with birds like terns, gulls, cormorants, 
kingfishers, bitterns, ospreys, and otters, and predatory fish like pike and perch, all needing to survive off these bream. So why does Natural England want to close off the key spawning area for these bream? And in our own model, over the 10 year period, would completely devastate uh, the breeding, breeding stock of Broad's bream for the future let alone the consequences to the avian ecology. The majority of the UK's leading fishery scientists, including those employed by the Environmental Agency, support our views on this. So it begs the question, why does Natural England and EA senior management want to progress this forward? So if you want to support our case and stop man really interfering with nature, please sign our petition. Thank you very much. Hi, this is the third video in this series looking at the impact of Northern Broads Bream and this one is focused on how they attract thousands of anglers to come and have some of the best natural river fishing in the UK. Tony Gibbons from Norwich and District Angling Association runs many angling competitions and festivals throughout the year on the rivers Bure and Fern. These attract thousands of anglers to compete against each other and to catch and release fish. These are highly competitive events, but have a history in the broads of going back many decades with thousands of anglers from all across the UK competing against each other to take part in national competitions. Sadly, lots of the large competitions now take place in commercial stillwaters uh, attracted by large volumes of carp, but the broads is still a natural venue. You can see with the graph on the screen how uh, the average um, catch rates over the last eight years in these angling festivals and competitions have shown, you know, it's around about £20 per person per competition in a five-hour match. And it's not unusual to catch a £1,000 worth of bream and roach in a single competition. So how does this compare with other rivers in the UK? Well, the Environmental Agency undertakes density surveys on many rivers across the UK. And the River Bure averages 102 fish per thousand square metres. And only the Avon in the Midlands seems to have a higher fish density. And you have to ask, why is this? Well, this is all about the natural broads ecosystem, which is a mixture of rivers and broads and dikes and channels with fantastic habitats for fish. And this is exactly the thing that Natural England and the Environmental Agency wants to destroy. So this takes us back to our previous model that we've used in other video clips and how this would be a complete disaster for Broad's Bream and all the anglers who come and attempt to catch them. So if you're an angler who enjoys fishing in the natural environment and wants to sustain natural fish stocks, please support our petition against the Environmental Agency in Natural England on the link below. Thank you.